Hi there, I'm Le Sherman, technical consultant in customer success, and I'm a friend of Max. In this episode, we will be talking about the assets that can be considered for reuse over the full life cycle of an API. So let's jump in. Before we look into the parts of the platform where reuse can be achieved, let's have a quick look into the full life cycle of an API from first thought to final deployment. It all starts with Design Center, which is used to create the API specification or the contract. API designers will create the API specification by using RAML or OAuth as a language. The next step is to publish our specification to AnyPoint Exchange, where users can have a look at it, provide feedback on the specification for future improvements, and activate the mocking service so they can start developing against the mocking services before the implementation of the actual API has even started. During the design phase, we also do have the API console to provide users a way to understand how the API is depicted. After publishing the API specification to AnyPoint Exchange, you will most likely want to start implementing your API. In this step, your developers will search for the specification in AnyPoint Exchange and then import the specification into AnyPoint Studio. AnyPoint Studio will then create a scaffold of your API based on the RAML and from there developers can start implementing the actual API and run MUnit tests against their implementation to ensure functionality. After finishing the API implementation and proper testing of your API, the next step is to deploy your new API so that your end users and consumers can finally use it. In order to do so, you can use AnyPoint Runtime Manager to deploy and manage your deployable to your choice of target. So it could be deployed into Cloud Hub, an on-premise standalone Mule Runtime or Runtime Fabric, for example. Once you've deployed your API, you can start operating it by applying policies to ensure things like security, quality of service, troubleshooting, transformation, and compliance. For this purpose, we have API Manager. If you're new to API Manager, check out the links below the video. Another big part in operating an API place monitoring, which can be achieved by leveraging the functions that AnyPoint Monitoring provides. And the last step in our full API lifecycle is where we want to make sure other users can actually leverage and reuse what we've done through the previous steps and give them room to write feedback for new versions and new assets by leveraging the functions of any point exchange. Now that we've gone through the full lifecycle of an API, let's zoom in and see some examples of how reuse can be achieved throughout the different phases. In general, we can summarize the steps into four major phases, designing, development, operations, and release. We will focus on the first three of these four phases as the first three have a high potential for reuse, but let's start with the design phase. By following reuse in this phase, we can actually reduce the design time with things like reusing existing API fragments to follow design standards, for example. We can also reuse meaningful examples to mock data. And with Flow Designer, users have an existing wizard from where they can create new flows and leverage other existing assets. And on top of that, studio developers can create the scaffold of an API by leveraging API Kit which is a function that takes a RAML or an OS and generates minimal mule flows so that developers don't have to start from scratch. The second phase with a high potential for reuse is development. Within this phase, we can speed up the attainment of business outcomes by reusing runtimes. An API exposes data from any system in a more consumable and abstract way. And if we're using this API, we don't need to rewrite any custom code, nor do we need the help of an SME to provide us with knowledge about how data can be actually accessed to retrieve, for example, account data. Another way to achieve reuse at runtime is to leverage existing scopes like 
message processors, connectors, transform message, and many more from inside AnyPoint Studio. AnyPoint Studio lets us also reuse project templates or examples to create a new project. And additionally to that, by using standardized scopes like message processors, transform message, connectors, and so on, you're able to track everything a developer drops into a mule flow. And this way, you can easily measure later on how many times a transform message, for example, has been reused. The third phase is about asset reuse in order to reduce operational effort during the operations phase. A very effective example for reduction of operational effort is when users are leveraging out-of-the-box policies with an API manager. Let's say we have around 140 APIs in our application network. By reusing and applying an OAuth policy to all of our APIs, 140 developers did not have to implement OAuth for each of their APIs. Consider how much time this can save. Another example in the area of monitoring is the capability to reuse dashboards, no matter if out-of-the-box dashboards or custom-built dashboards. Let's assume we have 120 people reusing one of the dashboards. This actually means that 120 people did not have to recreate a dashboard to get insights into their APIs. So far, we've seen the full life cycle of an API and examples for how reuse can be achieved over the phases of the API lifecycle. Let's now look through the key assets in our AnyPoint platform, which should be considered for reuse and the potential benefits. APIs in terms of assets can serve more than just one primary consumer. This helps to reduce build time all the way from experience and process to system APIs. Rama fragments, and we touched on that already during the design phase, this type of asset can be seen as the building blocks of Raml specifications. They can be used across many Raml specifications and they serve as a design accelerator. Connectors are reusable extensions to the Mule runtime engine, enabling you to integrate with third-party APIs, databases and standard protocols. It basically abstracts the technical details involved in connecting with a target system. Some advantages are it reduces code complexity as you don't have to know all the details of the target system. It simplifies the authentication process against the target system and it proactively infers metadata for the target system so the data weave can identify and transform data. And it also helps to make code maintenance easier. Another key asset to consider for reuse are templates. They help to accelerate integration with common systems using established integration patterns and best practices already built in place. Another great asset to achieve reuse are accelerators. Accelerators exist for different industries where they combine APIs, integration templates, reference architectures, industry components and common services. They can help you jumpstart integration projects, tailor customer interactions with unified real-time data, and all of that with battle-tested best practices already built in. Another example we already touched on during the operations phase are policies. Policies, no matter if they are out of the box or custom-built policies, are decoupled from the coding of integration and they provide reusable gatekeeping possibilities. And last but not least, common jars for the purpose of logging and error handling. These jars, if used across integration applications, enforce standard and governance while accelerating developer onboarding and development cycle at the same time. Thanks for watching this Friends of Max overview where we cover the reusable assets over the full API lifecycle. Feel free to leave a comment, check out the links below the video and don't forget to watch the other Friends of Max videos too. I hope to see you again soon.